I knew from that day on my daughter would be living in a nation where most of its states, she could be discriminated against merely because of who she is. Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley were my former students in legislation in classes I taught at the Harvard Law School and the Yale Law School, respectively. I was thoroughly disgusted with the reprehensible behavior and the reprehensible language of both of my former students. I've been a law professor almost 40 years, the last 22 at Yale. Ted Cruz was a very memorable student. He was not a shrinking violet. I don't think he was very popular among his fellow students, but I think the faculty, including me, really enjoyed him as a student and respected him. Josh Hawley was quieter, vastly more popular with his fellow students. He was not as outspoken a class participant as Ted Cruz had been and was not as outstanding a student. They were very conservative. They were very ambitious. They were presumably Republicans and we're going to advance through their connections politically. I couldn't bear to watch the insurrection and the sacking of the U.S. Capitol by the mob that had been directly incited by the President of the United States. And indirectly incited by the President's supporters including my student Josh Hawley, whose clenched fist as he entered the Capitol building surely played its own role in inspiring and inflaming the crowd. USA! 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 Both Cruz and Hawley tried to dress up irresponsible presidential claims with some Ivy League constitutional claims. I look to history, to the precedent of the 1876 election, the hayes tilden election where this Congress appointed an electoral commission to examine claims of voter fraud. And what I would urge of this body is that we do the same, that we appoint an electoral commission to conduct a 10-day emergency audit. Well, okay, that's he's very learned. He knows about that. Uh, but it's very inapt for a number of reasons. Uh, one reason is that the 1877 commission is a terrible precedent. It's a terrible precedent. Why? Because the Republicans stole that election. The Democrats, Tilden, got a majority of the vote. The loser, Hayes, his allies basically usurped, stole electors in South Carolina, Florida, and Louisiana, where the popular majorities had been against the Republicans. And then if that's not enough, Senator Cruz seems to have conveniently forgotten that in 1877, the president didn't take office until March. And so the Electoral Commission was not uh, under the time pressure in that year that it would have been in 2021. Pennsylvania elected officials passed a whole new law that allows universal mail-in balloting. This was the statute that governed this last election in which there are over 2.5 million mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court hasn't heard the case. There's no other court to go to to hear the case in the state. And so this is the appropriate place. This lawsuit after the election was asking the Pennsylvania judiciary to invalidate 2 million voters. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anything like it in the history of presidential elections. It was not challenged in 2019, which the statute said, if you're gonna challenge it, challenge it this year. It was not challenged in 2020, before the election at all. It was challenged in a bootless lawsuit after the election, which was unanimously rejected by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court on the grounds that this was too late. I don't have any respect <laughs> for the arguments, the legal arguments, that are made by very intelligent people who know better, who know that these are illegitimate arguments, and they ultimately fall back on the idea. Well, some of our constituents believe these kinds of arguments, and it seems to me that is the height of irresponsibility. 
And as far as anybody can, can gather, they were doing it for personal political gain. Thank you so much. Okay, well, politicians do things for personal political gain, but you do not subvert our system of government for partisan political gain. I was raised as a Republican. I'm an independent. The Republicans are a party that has sold itself. And so there's this other party, which is unrecognizable to me, whose members are terrified of criticizing a sociopathic president who seems to be holding them hostage electorally. George W. Bush, succeeded by Obama, almost 180 degree ideological turn, as far as I can gather, could not have been more gracious. President Obama, succeeded by somebody, it's not even 180 degrees, it's like a different universe, <laughs> could not have been more gracious. President Trump handing over to Joe Biden, the sorest, most bitter, sour grapes loser in American history. I think, at the very least, uh, the American people deserve an apology. I guess because I'm a hat maker, I thought she might like a hat. The hat is right here next to me. I have not seen it. picked out this special one and I hope it's a, the right one. Ah! Oh! I love it. Look at that. Oh my goodness. It is the right color. This is that color that pop. I didn't want red. <laughs> well, you know why. <laughs> It's white supremacy, supporting white supremacy in this country. And we won't, we, we will not sit by and sit back and allow that to continue. She looked like she would be able to push things along for better conditions. You have to get the materials. Some you can make by hand, and some you pull out a block. I have wooden molds, and you pull, and steam it, and shape, and pull. It's not easy, but come up with different designs. You start out with one thing, and end up with something else. And so it's uh, quite a a process. I grew up in a household where, you know, we had to wear a hat and white gloves uh, with patent leather shoes. <laughs> yes, that, that's the way I grew up also. She was very nice and she enjoyed wearing hats. Yes. And she always see, has a hat. I can see why. This is about to be a, a a staple for me. I might like literally put in an order for a couple more colors because this is beautiful. Just the clean tables off for the waiters. It was like a bus girl. I remember Kennedy at a table that I cleaned off. He, he was talking his wife at that time. wasn't his wife at that time, but they were at a table I was cleaning off. I finally got a job with them working in the hat shop selling supplies 
and as a stock person keeping things together. And I would see design was coming in and the way they would put stuff together. And I just got interested in making hats. How many hats do you think you've made in your entire life? Oh, I can't count. <laughs> I'm wearing my hat, I'm ready to go. What advice would you give for me because you have had this long, amazing career? Just keep on working. It's not easy and there's a lot of problems, but you have to keep um, trying to correct the problem and keep on trying to see that people do the right thing. God created us male and female. In his image, he created us. The Equality Act that we are to vote on this week destroys God's creation. I rise today on behalf of the millions of Americans who continue to be denied housing, education, public services, and much, much more because they identify as members of the LGBTQ community. Americans like my own daughter, who years ago bravely came out to her parents as transgender. I knew from that day on, my daughter would be living in a nation where most of its states, she could be discriminated against merely because of who she is. members of the uh, Republican Party uh, did reach out to me privately and expressed that they were horrified by her behavior and they were horrified by her general uh, being in Congress, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, a few actually spoke out publicly. Um, Adam uh, Kinzinger is among them and I really appreciated those comments. I was simply expressing uh, my support for my daughter, the greater LGBTQ community, and uh, Representative Green uh, took another path. Uh, she is in disagreement with me, shall we say, but clearly, clearly she is angry. Uh, she's angry at everybody and everything. So uh, her kind of modus operandi at all times is to, in fact, bully people. Well, you can only let bullies go so long and you have to speak out. And so I was making a statement about seeing the community, seeing LGBTQ folks, embracing them and respecting them.
Dr. Levine, do you believe that minors are capable of making such a life-changing decision as changing one's sex? Well, Senator, thank you for your interest in this question. Um, transgender medicine is a very complex and nuanced field um, with robust research and uh, standards of care that have been developed. And if I am fortunate enough to be confirmed as the Assistant Secretary of Health, I will look forward to working with you and your office and coming to your office and discussing the particulars of the standards of care for transgender yeah. medicine. Senator, uh, transgender medicine is a very complex and nuanced field, uh, and if confirmed to the position of Assistant Secretary of Health, I would certainly be pleased to come to your office and talk with you and your staff about the standards of care and the complexity of this field. I can't thank, vote for you if you can't Thank you so it. much, Senator Paul. Senator Levine, thank you for uh, answering the question. I will turn to Senator Baldwin. It is really critical to me that our nominees be treated with respect and that our questions focus on their qualifications and the work ahead of us rather than on ideological and harmful misrepresentations like those we heard from Senator Paul earlier. in some corners of the internet. I'm a band man in the state of New Jersey. How many leftists does it take to screw in a light bulb? That's not funny! Now the fake news media and their allies in Silicon Valley. Big tech. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and the liberal left. Globalists who want to indoctrinate our children. The socialists and the communists. The woke mob. The cancel culture. They would drive through our area smoking pot probably, and they'd smell some cows and they'd see some dust and they'd say, well, we gotta get rid of all this. You know, and then they'd go up into the mountains, smoke some more dope, and then they would go back. This is about controlling what you see, hear, and say, thereby what you think. They're trying to have indoctrination camps of schools. Indoctrination camps for the left, 100%. Sounds a lot like communist China, doesn't it? Math is now racist. Look out, Mr. Potato Head, you're next. This is all metaphorically, of course, for the media out there. <laughs> right? Caveat necessary. God bless! Who would want to be around these people? We conservatives believe in the rule of law. And I know this might sound like a little bit of a downer, but we also believe in property rights. So please, Everyone, when you're in the ballroom, when you're seated, you should still be wearing a mask.
And I tell you what, can I just tell you, speaking of being canceled. President Trump, he's a real American samurai. The party of America first. Pro-Trump, America first. America first. America first. America first means all of American. T-Pac. That's what it feels like, guys. America first to America last. You think about it, right? America last. Many people have asked, what is Trumpism? A new term being used more and more. I'm hearing that term more and more. I didn't come up with it. Never forget that we did it. Never let them take the credit because they don't deserve the credit. Fake they news, they're the now, biggest they fakers there are. But the press, refuse to ask the questions. And when I They're ask not giving the us their so best and they're fine. Just remember okay, I said, he wants windmills, the windmills, the windmills that don't work when you need them. Alice, uh, the wind isn't blowing. I don't believe we'll have any electricity. Remember, we would, we would kid, but I wasn't actually kidding. Do you miss me yet? Do you miss me yet? This is just dumb. Fact check, true. Thanks, everybody. That was wonderful, beautiful.